We're here today to interview a patient that spent the last 40 years in captivity. And by all accounts has not uttered a word. This monster. The Halloween series has gone some places, to say the least. What started as a humble tale of an escaped mental patient who may be purely and simply evil, morphed and shifted into familial psychic connections, ancient druidic cults, martial arts rappers, <laughs> and all sorts of other great and terrible off-the-wall plot points, resulting in not a small handful of separately bleach-washed continuities. So with all that, excluding this blunt and honestly meaningless director's cut bit from Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, Michael. For God in heaven, die! How is it that the text has never seriously addressed Michael Myers' silence? Well, never until the 2018 version, that is. There he is. He can speak. He just chooses not to. Now, this is something of a strange case in that, yes, the film does directly tackle the subject of the shape's mute qualities, right in the opening scene, in fact even going so far as to have the last line spoken before our iconic pumpkin credit sequence being this. Say something! But here's the thing, if this is our setup, then where the hell is the payoff? It's screenwriting 101, don't include something in your script for no reason. If you're going to set something up, make sure there's a proper payoff for it. Ruling out the totally real possibility that this was just poor writing, I'd like to take a closer look at this almost character arc. Say something, Michael. This through line about Michael speaking goes well beyond just our pre-title sequence. Aaron Corey, one of our Inciting Incident podcasters, harps on the point further when they first meet final girl Laurie Strode. Laurie, we saw him. We met with Michael. I showed him the mask. It was nothing. No response, nothing. He won't talk to anyone. Never has been. Far later than that, Michael's obsessive psychiatrist, Dr. Sartain, intensely questions Allison when she makes this false claim. He spoke to me. He spoke to you? The doctor is enthralled by the suggestion, and goes so far as to try and guess what Michael may have said. What was the word? Was it the sister's name? <laughs> Judith? Ironically, or maybe not, Sartain's final words, at least in this version, we'll get to that later, are identical to Aaron's pre-titled ones. Say something. Hmm. All this talk of what Michael may or may not say or have said connects us back to our lead, Lori, and what she may ultimately have to say to him. Say goodbye to Michael and get over it. Goodbye. And this connection here brings us all the way to the film's ending. Or endings. The climax of this movie was somewhat famously reshot during post-production after test audiences were less than in love with what the filmmakers had. You can actually still catch glimpses of this OG ending in some of the film's earlier advertising. As initially scripted and shot, the final confrontation came down to a rather brief knife fight between Lori and the Shape on her front lawn, which was decided by one well-placed crossbow bolt from Lori's daughter, Karen. Michael then stumbled off into the woods, and the film ended with the two franchise favorites both rather ambiguously near death. Cue those reshoots, and now we have the incredibly satisfying- It's not a cage, baby! <laughs> it's a trap. Finale, and with it, the payoff for that earlier scene with Allison. Goodbye, Michael. This moment here is the perfect ending for Laurie's arc as established, but not so much for Michael's. Doesn't it almost feel like he should say something back to her? Just some final words to the woman he's terrorized for 40 years? To the family of would-be victims who bested him? Now, I'm not advocating for Michael to belt out a dramatic monologue, but they clearly set up for some kind of payoff here. And we got nothing. And maybe that is the point. Maybe, as Lori said in her first scene, There's nothing to learn. There are no new insights or discoveries. Or something got lost along the way. As I said, this movie went through a lot of changes, both in the scripting and editing stages. And if Lori's entire arc about saying goodbye to Michael was a late addition, that's right, both the setup scene with Allison and this entire ending payoff were reshoots, 
Who's to say that something on Michael's end couldn't have been a late omission? Well, as stated on page 413 of the book, Taking Shape, Developing Halloween from Script to Scream, Dr. Sartain once had very different parting words with his patient, and I quote, As first written, Sartain's final words were far more shocking. As the shape lifts his boot, the doctor intones, But you said, I could watch. Let me repeat that. But you said, I could watch. There's no specific information as to when this line was excised, but the implications alone are fascinating. I've never heard him speak, is he? In spite of my encouragements, he remains unresponsive. But tonight, so many possibilities exist. Maybe there really was more to Michael's voice in an earlier draft, or even cut. Maybe he had more to say, if you'll pardon the expression, but the film was tracking for big numbers and they pulled it, possibly to work it into one of the sequels. Who really knows? Just the filmmakers, I suppose. But hey, at least it's fun to talk about.